I was super lucky to find an early screening of Glass Onions, what, like six weeks before its release on Netflix? And of course, this will be a spoiler-free review because I'm not a dick. But yeah, let's talk about Glass Onion. Glass Onion. This is a follow-up from Ryan Johnson's Knives Out, which is a murder mystery with Daniel Craig as the eccentric and intelligent Benoit Blanc at the center of all of it. And Netflix made something like a $400 million deal with Ryan Johnson to make two more of these films exclusive to their streaming service. And so now we have a sequel. I say sequel, Daniel Craig is returning for this, but it's with a whole new ensemble of characters and set in a very different scenario. And look, I'm just gonna say out front, I loved the first film and I'm really happy to say that this one met the same standards. What made Knives Knives Out such a treat was its deviation from the black and white whodunit movies that we'd seen before. Ryan Johnson had the pressure of creating a sequel with an equally interesting and unique story that didn't retread on the same elements that we saw in the previous film. Props to him here because where there might be an argument on how good the mystery aspect of this film is, what we have is definitely an enjoyable ride from start to finish. Where you're never quite satisfied with that conclusion that you've built up in your head preemptively and you're really taught that the devil's in the details. Glass Onion isn't so much about the who's or the hows, and while that is still a mystery in this film, this is more about the whys behind everyone's motives in this film. This movie works because we have such a diverse and entertaining group of characters to guide us through the story. Some other murder mystery films feel a little bit unfair because that twist or the extra details that we need are deliberately kept from us, which then makes that reveal feel a bit unearned. Glass Onion does a really good job of rewarding you for paying close attention, and the more you take in, the more you're going to get out throughout the story as this mystery slowly unwinds. Ryan Johnson also doesn't patronise you here, he expects you to be paying attention. And in knowing that you might see these crucial clues, he uses character performances to make you almost doubt yourself, which I think is a really interesting, nice way to take you through this film. Daniel Craig is back as Benoit Blanc, and if you liked him in Knives Out, you'll like him here. And if you didn't, nothing's gonna change. I can't talk to you about the intricacies and the character development here because I think half the fun's being led along these false goose chases and the changes in character development you get along the way. But to me, I really enjoy Daniel Craig's performance here, and I think he's a really solid anchor to the plot. Ed Norton is also really great in here. He pulls off that eccentric, bullshit, billionaire persona so well. We also get Dave Bautista, Catherine Hahn, Kate Hudson, who are also really great in here, and there are others in this cast that I would love to talk about. But the real surprise standout here for me was Janelle Monet. Initially thinking she was gonna be the least interesting character, turned out to be the the biggest contender and my favourite for the film. I won't say anything else out of fear of spoiling the plot, but she does really well to bounce off of certain characters and is really endearing to watch. On another note, the set designs here are awesome. Very uniquely designed environments to work around, and Ryan Johnson does a great job of incorporating these very bizarre sets into both the comedy but as well as the foreshadowing intention. It's just really well rounded. Unsurprisingly, it shares a lot of that comedy and foreshadowing elements that you would have seen in Knives Out, but applies it to this whole new sandbox, which keeps this film feeling original and exciting. This had me laughing throughout and had me wanting to keep diving deeper into the story. I will say the ending gets a bit too extreme for my tastes. The film definitely feels like it's going for that audience reaction of punching your fist in the air going, woo, yeah, sort of vibe. But besides that, there's not really much I can fault this film on. I would really recommend watching this, not only on Netflix when it comes out, but if you find a chance to go see it in cinemas, I think it's definitely worth doing so. If memory serves me right, I think it's on Netflix early December, but it'll be in cinemas a week before that. I definitely want to see this one again. There will 100% be things that I didn't notice the first time around that I'll see in a repeat viewing that will make it just as exciting to watch again. But will you be watching Glass Onion? Will you be watching it in cinemas or will you wait for it to come out on streaming services? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you liked this review or found it helpful, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe, it always helps. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime and video games. Until next time guys, take care. Bye bye.